I think this might actually have to be one of those videos where I use the awkward YouTuber. This is definitely more like a YouTuber video because it's a tag. Hello there guys, it's Joel here, aka Galax, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have not prepared for this video at all, so literally everything that comes out of my mouth is off the top of my head. This video is not sponsored by Starbucks, I'm just a little bitch that loves a vanilla latte every now and again. If my energy levels skyrocket halfway through this video, it's because of this. This video is to do with a YouTuber tag that I've watched on a few YouTube channels recently. I saw it on James Welsh and then I also saw it on Soph Does Life. I've never seen any of her videos before but it got suggested to me. I think because I've watched James' one. But basically it is a tag called YouTubers I Don't Trust. I thought it was really, really funny and really interesting to do. Obviously it's more aimed towards like beauty gurus or like skincare um, YouTubers. YouTubers that use a lot of like different products in that way, I guess. Um, but I think it can work for fashion YouTubers as well. So here I am trying it, 2020, why not? Um, okay, so let's begin. Number one. Have you ever received a product, tried it, didn't like it, and then decided not to review it? Uh, constantly. I get sent stuff. Most of the time I get an email from a brand saying, oh, we'd like to send you something. And I'm like, well, what is it? I don't want to come off as entitled or spoiled or anything, but I do not want to waste a brand's money or time if they're going to send me something that I'm not going to use or don't like the look of or not wear. Um, most of the time I get contacted, it is about clothing. Um, and a lot of the time brands are like, it's a surprise. And I'm like, no. I need to know exactly what is coming. Because although it's really lovely when brands do send um, gifts, most often it's not something that I would wear and it never gets used. Um, so it either gets donated or given to one of my friends. And if the brand had actually spoken to me about it beforehand and I'd chosen something that I liked or told them that it's probably not for me, then could have saved ourselves a lot of time and money. So yeah, I, but I've still to this day received things that I just don't like or would never wear. So it just goes straight to be donated. Products you use alone but don't show or use online. See, this is why it's more tailored for like beauty YouTubers, I guess. But in terms of clothing, products that I use and don't talk about, my underwear, um, I went through a brief, <laughs> um, I went through a brief phase. Not a brief phase, but a, a, a phase in my life where all I would want to buy is Calvin Klein underwear. I then over the years started buying different types of underwear, but most of my underwear is still Calvin Klein. Um, but I don't talk about that on YouTube or anything because I never show my underwear. Uh, that's, yes, the one product, clothing-wise, that I don't talk about on YouTube. Number three, products you want but won't buy because you don't support the brand. I don't think there's any products that I want but I don't support the brand. There's obviously, like, brands that I don't support, uh, like Dolce & Gabbana, Philip Pline. Is that how you say it? Philip Pline. Um, but they don't make anything I like, so there's not a problem there. There's no brand that I don't support that doesn't make things that I like, if you know what I mean. Do you have any blocked words? I can actually read you my blocked words. And I only have these blocked words because either it got really, really annoying, or I knew that any comments surrounding these words was gonna be from someone whose opinion I didn't care about. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that, Scott is being annoying. So my block words, I'm not gonna read out slur words. <laughs> the first two are slur words. Homophobic slur words, so no place. The third one is skinny jeans. I got so sick of people talking about skinny jeans. I even have a video about skinny jeans and I ended up blocking the word skinny jeans. Um, that was from years and years ago, years ago. Another homophobic slur word. Um, <laughs> the next word is unsubscribe. <laughs> because some people will just leave those really, really annoying comments where they're like, unsubscribe. And most of the times it would be when I put up a video talking about uh, LGBTQ issues, relationships and stuff like that. As soon as people found out about, or I always talk about my sexuality online, like it's never a thing that's been hidden. Um, so it just shocks me when people find out and then they're like, unsubscribe. It's like, you're an idiot. This has nothing to do with my uh, style, which is probably why you followed me in the first place. Unsub, again after that, and unsubscribed. Oh wow, so I really don't have that many blocked 
words. Oh, and the last one is fat. Because I don't feel like that's a good word to comment. Um, I really, I have a lot of blocked users. I go ham with the block button. Like, these are all the people that are blocked on my YouTube channel. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's my channel and I can do what I want with it. So if people are being really, like, aggressive or starting arguments with other subscribers and stuff, then I'll just block them because it's just easier. Do you delete comments? If so, why? I've never deleted my own comments. Um, I've probably deleted comments, like I said, the people that I've blocked. If they're just starting ridiculous arguments or super negative or aren't willing to listen to anyone else's opinion, um, then I just delete them. Or if it gets extremely personal, uh, then I would delete them as well. Like, if I feel like someone crosses the line, then I would delete the comment. Oh, the next one is, do you block people? But I guess I already answered. Number seven, have you ever lied about a product to stay on good terms with the brand? Absolutely not. If a product, if I don't like a product, I'll generally just not feature it or talk about it. But if things go wrong with certain brands or products, then I'm definitely open to talking about it. Like, when I did the video about my thoughts on cold laundry in the past, I'm definitely willing to open up a discussion and talk about things um, about with brands, especially if products have gone wrong. I've obviously changed my opinions on some products, like my videos where I say I've regretted buying this or whatever, um, but that's just me being honest, because at the time I did think it was great, but then on reflection, I'm like, mm, do I regret buying this? So I think that's a different kind of thing though. <laughs> the next one is, have you initially liked the product, then reviewed it, and then changed your mind, but didn't let your audience know? No, I always let you guys know. Like, if I'm not feeling something, I will tell you. Um, so if I change my mind on something, I will tell you. Whether it's on YouTube or on my Instagram story, I always let people know. And you can see that by what I'm wearing as well. I feel like it's very obvious what brands I like and what brands I don't like by what I'm wearing in my videos or on my Instagram. Number nine, influencers you don't trust. I hate the word influencer to begin with because I feel like it's a massive umbrella term for anyone that has any sort of following from 15,000 followers to like, 16 million um i hate the umbrella term influencer like i see myself as like a content creator because i create content on the internet and that's the reason that i have a following whereas some like let's say uh tv personalities or like reality tv stars might only have a following because they were on tv so people don't necessarily follow them because of the content that they produce they follow them because of who they are as a person um, I mean, people might follow me for who I am as a person as well, but they didn't see me on TV. They saw me through my own creations, if you know what I mean. Whereas you might have seen someone from TOWIE only through TOWIE. So it's like, that's your perceived perception of them. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, but most reality TV stars that get a following through going on reality TV, then don't really know how to create content and they're forced into this like influencer sphere because they have a lot of followers. So they start then like taking pictures or doing like teeth whitening adverts or um, you know, detox tea and that kind of stuff. So I think that those kind of influencers give um, content creators like me a bad name because we're kind of bunched together with this whole like reality TV star kind of thing when it's like not the same thing at all. Um, so they're the kind of influences that I do trust. Like I would never trust a review from someone that's just been on Love Island. Like, absolutely not. Influences I trust the most, probably people I know that in real life that are also influencers. So like Sarah Ashcroft, uh, Miko Putinen, Daniel Simmons, Sanji, all those guys. Like, I know them in real life, so I know that when they're saying stuff on their platforms, I know that they're being Genuine. Number 11, secret tips or, or product application that you don't show while on camera. That doesn't really make sense for me. Number 12, have you ever showed one product but were actually using another? Again, I don't think that really counts for me. Like if I was wearing a different brand, people would know or the cut or the shape of or the style of something would be different. Ha Number 13, have you ever not disclosed the sponsorship? Absolutely not. I literally, I put ad in the first bit of every single Instagram caption that I do. I um, explain in YouTube videos whether it is sponsored, uh, whether a portion of the video is sponsored. I tell you guys when something has been gifted or when something has been given to me with a discount. Uh, I just think it's 
It's so easy to just be honest. Like, why would I even try and lie about it? Number 14, have you ever had a bad interaction with a brand? Have I ever had a bad interaction with a brand? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> multiple, multiple occasions. You have to remember, I have been doing full-time blogging, like full-time content creation for five years now. And in those five years, I've definitely had bad interactions with brands. I've had a brand on the phone to me apologizing profusely. I very much stand my ground with brands as well. Like I don't take any bullshit. I think there's a real um, like disconnect from people who don't do this as a job. If you don't do this as a job, you really, really struggle to understand what exactly goes into it. Um, so yeah, I've definitely had bad interactions with brands. Number 15, have you ever bandwagon with other people's thoughts on a particular product? Absolutely not. If I think something's rubbish, I'm going to tell you. I don't just think something's good because everyone else is thinking it. Um, so yeah. Things that other creators do that get on your nerves. Um, I think that Soph does, Soph does Life said this as well, and it was creators that don't um, disclose sponsorships, so creators that don't put ad. Well, they put ad like at the end of an Instagram caption or like in a comment below it or if they just don't disclose it at all and you can clearly tell that it's an ad. <laughs> One big thing as well. Now I do follow some people that do this and it just gets on my nerves a little bit, like not too much, but when people on Instagram post pictures that aren't theirs to kind of like set a mood or a theme. And some of my favorite Instagrammers do this. And when they credit the original photographer, I think it's, okay because it comes across more like a mood board and you're like oh this image is from this person but when they don't even put their tag in the caption and they just like tag it slightly in the picture like in the corner and just try and hide it especially if it's very in keeping with their feed like people might think that those things that you're posting are yours um i just think it's very very kind of sly in a way like i said it's not like the biggest thing in the world but it is kind of annoying um, but I understand why people do it and I think it looks good on some people's feeds and it's like giving that impression that that person leads that lifestyle but obviously like Instagram is a lot of it is made up anyway like nothing is someone's 100% true life um, but that's just going even more deeper into the realm of like well this picture isn't even yours like you didn't even take it so and you're not acting like you didn't and that brings us to the end of the challenge. I hope that you enjoyed watching this. Let me know if there's any, um, let me know if there's any other of these YouTuber challenge things that you want me to do. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.